Welcome to the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker Team. And we are thrilled once again to be here with you just to chat about real estate and real estate questions. I'm Yetta Decker. And I'm Ken Decker. Yeah. And together we form part of the Decker Team. How exciting is that? You get the pretty one and you get the... Knowledgeable one. <laughs> I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Okay, okay so I have a question. Okay. Well, you're the experienced one. <laughs> I'm not sure I like that. I'm not sure if you would like that if he was talking to you. But anyhow, that's part of the advantage and maybe part of the, is that the upside or the downside of being in the same industry as your spouse as well as your children? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. For a quarter of a century. Okay, let's stop that. <laughs> We're talking about the questions that people ask or ought to ask people uh, a realtor prior to making a decision about buying or selling a home. This is part four already, and we thought this was going to be a quick little show. And they just and keep going and going and going. And I hope you don't feel like it's boring. I think what we've decided to do is rather than giving you surfacey answers on each of the questions that people do ask us, we've been giving you a good, thorough answer. Maybe what we can do once we've recorded all of these, we can go back again and then give the 30 second answer to so each of the of questions. So instead of snorkeling, we're scuba diving. Right. That's what Ken, see, he, remember he said he's the knowledgeable one. I think we both have some base of knowledge in the real estate industry, as does the rest of the team. <laughs> yes, we certainly And do. yet he is the more stats guy, the more seek the details. And I, it's been a skill I have learned rather than a natural skill. Absolutely. And I have had to learn it. So, yeah, I got a couple yeah. questions for you. That people ask. <laughs> yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so, Let's go. So, how do you plan on marketing my home? Because it's special. Of course it is. Every home is actually unique. So, one of the important pieces, and we haven't always known to do this. This has actually come out of attending a, I was going to say a, disgusting except it's not disgusting a huge number of real estate conferences all over the states and Canada and in fact out of the North American continent as well attending conferences that will that have taught us a lot of insights and skills and just how to even market so a lot of the conferences we've gone to in fact are marketing conferences marketing for luxury homes marketing for traditional homes and how do you get that best foot forward when it comes to a home mm -hmm. right yeah. and so that's something we've spent a lot of time doing and one of the things that we've come up with is probably the biggest single if I had to identify one piece of the best information I ever learned was that not every home or any home really ought to be described as a four bed three bath single car garage, even if it is a four bed, three bath, single car garage home, <laughs> because then you're missing the story. There's no spark in that, is there? No, it's just kind of like boring. And it's kind of the way our real estate industry has become a little routine maybe in using those parameters. And there's certainly important search parameters when we're helping a buyer buy a home because it must meet the framework of what somebody's looking for so it's not that it's unvaluable information it's just not a headline and a headline also isn't the address we used to put the address as the headline of the property and unless you live on sussex um drive in ottawa <laughs> any probably, particular number <laughs> 24 i think it is <laughs> unless it's 24 <clears throat> sussex then it probably doesn't really matter what the address is the community may matter what it offers matters and whether it's 3300 pearl street or 3294 pearl street until you've seen the home doesn't really matter no and what if it's the best pearl on pearl street then that might work that could be a headline yeah. um even then Maybe. Because really what you want to do is be able to tell a story, a story of the house. And often we can arrive at the story by hearing from our current seller, from our current person that was a homeowner at one point or a home buyer at one point that purchased that home. So what was their motivation? And then the other thing I do as a realtor is we spend a fair bit of time thinking about what are those catchphrases, those headlines. And we work at a three-part uh, headline and then a lot of good copy 
to support that three line headline. So it's a main title, a subtitle, and then a sub subtitle, I guess, um, where you you can use that in the majority of your marketing and really draw attention to the property because that's what's unique about it. And then you write great copy to go along with it. Now, I don't personally write the copy. I write the concept and my seller helps me determine what things appeal to them which are likely those same things that we're going to want to focus on and so great long copy is actually way more desirable for a homeowner or home buyer than short great copy now if you're going to write lousy long copy well then short great copy will win every day so it's really <laughs> about being able to create a story of that house and then be able to put that out there so because every home is unique. And I think when you're saying a story, it's it's the feeling, the lifestyle, the, the ambiance, what you get from the home that we're attempting to put into words. Right. Because a description like hardwood floors, it's already ticked off on one of the boxes, right? So we don't need to say hardwood floors, but maybe we need to say the color of them or or that they're gleaming or that they're... Uh, reclaimed wood or some some further descriptors on it right that adds some more value than just the fact that it's hardwood now maybe if it's hardwood on the first floor main floor and it's a beautiful laminate that matches it in the lower level you might want to talk about the hardwood is creating continuity Mm -hmm. throughout the house so that may be an aspect yeah. maybe this home has an amazing flow so we're going to want to talk about the flow and the way it just you just easily navigate from one space to the other and you don't feel choppy you in fact feel like you're on a journey a comfortable yeah, enjoyable when journey we when we first bought our home the basement we get lost down there because it was so chopped up in so many different rooms and pathways and we opened it up considerably and now it flows nicely Right, so maybe we're talking about the flow of a home. Maybe we, we make the main focus of a home because every home is unique and special and certainly to the seller it is. And so they're our best source of getting insight into what those things are. Maybe it's the park-like setting. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's, um, it could be just about anything. I'm just trying to think of all the different ones we've had. We've had some where you have home, business, and cottage all rolled into one. And right. so you're going to focus on those three things. Another one, it might be work and play because it's got a pool set up and a work set up that works. The home cottage and play was waterfront property that was a complete house. And so rather than just saying, hey, waterfront, you're still going to bring that into your longer copy, except something catchy that will move people forward to reading and mm -hmm. learning more about the property. Mm -hmm. Did I answer your question, Ken? A little bit. Okay, then you can answer the rest. Well, I think some of the other ways we advertise yeah. is not just, uh, well, I think it's very important we create a lifestyle story, but then also we're going to create uh, websites, uh, web content, videography, YouTube, post it on our YouTube channel. We're going to syndicate our websites out to, to hundreds of websites so that um, it can be seen. Right. You know, because the problem with the internet is it's so vast. It's also the first place people turn to look for properties. Mm -hmm. And if they can't find yours, then it's of no value. Right. So the more websites we can get it on, even on competitors' websites, can you believe that? We'll yeah, put, we do that. Yeah. And not everybody does. Like no. some of these things that we talk about are sort of the standard fare occasionally. And yet for the most part, the things we're talking about are quite unique to the way we do things. And that's why it's good to ask these questions of a realtor because you're not necessarily going to get the answers that we've been giving you. Mm -hmm. And if we've got a luxury home, we're going to advertise it in Luxury Magazine or in the Unique Homes website, things of that nature. Because, And some people say, well, I want my home there. Well, if it's not a luxury home, there's no point in putting it there. Because the people looking there are looking for a luxury home, not a starter or, you know, or whatever, or a medium home. Or even investment property, that wouldn't be the medium. We would use no. different space for our, an investment yeah. property. And in fact, one of the other things we do to get the word out there around your home is this actual show. Yes. We always feature a property or two. We started with featuring none, and then we thought, well, we should feature one. And so there's the odd show where Ken keeps rambling. 
and therefore we run out of time to feature a show. Oh yes, okay, that's a new one. <laughs> okay, so it was me. I'll take credit <laughs> for where credit is due. And so there's been a few shows where we haven't been able to feature something because the time just ran away with us. And otherwise, we now attempt to feature a couple of properties mm -hmm. so that we can get special attention. And of course, we have a newsletter that we also that's been around since '89, in fact, mm -hmm. where we can feature the properties. And then there's a Neighbors of Manatic magazine as well. And so that's fabulous. And I think sometimes I've had clients tell me where they want me to market. Yeah. And the odd time I do it, and most of the time, it's in an avenue that doesn't work so it's really wasted money i'd rather put that marketing dollar because everyone has a certain amount of marketing dollar they can spend we might as well put it in the most effective areas because you know sometimes they'll say well can you put it in the you know the local newspaper in the in the classified section and go, well it's not going to sell like a three or four line descriptor of a house is not where people find their homes no not anymore. So we spend a lot of money on videography, on professional photography, because if the pictures and the video look fantastic when people see it online, then they want to go see the house. Right. And if they look poor, the lighting's off, the windows are too bright, and you can't see the, the room or the flooring, all you, or they don't have a wide enough angle of lens, and all you see is a bed, that's not enticing to go see a property. So a lot of our marketing begins with how we present in the first place and then where we present it right absolutely. secondary yeah okay so that being said if we market a home that looks horrible that's not gonna help right no so what's gonna help how are we gonna help them prepare their home for sale is, is one that, of the questions very we get common right question. yeah yes. and i think the buzzword is staging and i actually struggle with that word because it sounds artificial Mm -hmm. It sounds staged, not authentic, not real. And if you're a follower of mine on Facebook, you'll know that I post daily a little video called Yetta Raw and Real. And that falls into all aspects of my life. It, you can't really change who you are. You either are or you aren't. And that's mm -hmm. the way I, I guess you would say, the way I roll. Yeah. And so when it comes to the home, you want to present it in its best light possible now having said that price will eventually make up for every condition so we on occasion meet a seller that for various reasons are not in a position to do the work to cause the home to shine mm -hmm. it happens and so it doesn't mean you have to do any work i we have sold home sold homes that you literally had a path to walk through where you couldn't get you couldn't even see the bed never mind take a picture of the bed and you're simply marketing to that buyer in that case and it may affect price it will affect price yeah it yeah. will and so if we have you have a little bit of time there's significant value to be said and return on investment for causing your home to look sparkly and so it's home preparation more than it is home staging. So it's not so much about taking all your stuff out and putting in all new stuff. If it's a vacant home, it may be worthwhile putting some furniture in and it may not be. It really depends on where it is, what it is, what the situation is. So really what we're looking to do is show the home in, re in essentially its best light mm -hmm. it possible given the personal situation for the seller right and if you're watching this on video as yeah. opposed to just listening you might look around from the different camera angles and notice there's paintings everywhere and you think wow they have a lot of artwork in their studio and it doesn't necessarily <laughs> work with each other yeah like why some is of it that does there? and and really this is kind of some of the warehousing of the paintings and photographs and um, artwork that we have to be able to help present a home in its best light mm -hmm. and so we'll bring some artwork in and put it on the walls to warm up a property or or bring some congruency to the to the feel of it and so we have to have a lot of different paintings different colors so that it picks up the right thing in the room yeah so, because small pieces of artwork 
can actually be very distracting to the eye. And a lot of us, and myself included, love my family pictures. I love having walls of collage around the grandkids and our kids and our friends and just everybody in general. And yet what that does is it's distracting to the potential buyer that's coming to your home. Mm -hmm. They spend time figuring out who you are and what you're about instead of looking at the home. So they get distracted and also it's really none of their business, right? You're thinking of making a move. They don't need to know who you are as a family person. They're interested in the quality of the home and the features that it has. And so rather than it being a distraction, often we'll encourage those family memories, they're as beautiful as they are, to be put away during the time the home's on the market. And so replacing a bunch of smaller art pieces of artwork and or family personal pieces of artwork with one large piece is just easier for the eye to focus on the room and have the room actually feel more inviting and more spacious. Mm -hmm. So that would be probably, sure, painting first. Painting is yep, probably your biggest single thing from a home mm -hmm. prepara preparation perspective. See, I like the word home preparation. I just can't say it very well. <laughs> so you want to prepare the home outside as well. You want it to have great curb appeal. So you want to clean off the cobwebs. You want to spray, spray paint. No, you don't want to spray paint. You want to power wash the front of your house so that it's clean and walkways and edge the driveway and put a new load of gravel if it's a country property. Black top <laughs> the uh, asphalt if it's a asphalt mm -hmm. driveway. You know, pull out the weeds of the inner lock. Take the weeds out of the gardens. Put some fresh mulch on little flower pot at the door with some fresh flowers in it something that adds some color and brightness and just clean the windows all those kinds of things are huge for home preparation you start on the outside at, well actually start at the streetscape and sort of walk your eye inward toward the house backyard also important most important what you can see from the windows in the house people will go into the backyard to get a feel for it once they fall in love and yet that's a secondary experience. Usually it's the street, streetscape, front house, around the doorway, because that's where they get to spend a lot of time or a little bit of time waiting for the realtor to undo the lockbox or for somebody to answer the door and let them in in some rare cases. And then wander through the house and look out the windows. Only once they fall in love do people generally go into the backyard. Yep. And so then it does need to be beautiful back mm -hmm. there too. So the sort of that main thoroughfare, your outside, then your front entrance way, everything that's there, the powder room that might be near the front door, one or two big pieces of artwork there if there's wall space for it or an appropriately sized piece of artwork. Some walls are thin and we just want a small piece. Some walls it would be too much, too narrow. You feel like you're going to run into the artwork. So it's not all about big. It's just about having the right thing at the right place. Yeah. And I think something that is quite often forgotten is people want to buy a home that Mr. and Mrs. Clean live in. And so, you know, we don't always, we have, you know, full lifestyles and we don't always clean to the level that we, you know, think, or maybe we just live differently, right, than other people. But I think it's super important. And if you're not Mr. and Mrs. Clean, then hire Mr. or Mrs. Clean to clean your house <clears throat> before it goes on the market because it needs to be squeaky clean. People will look even, you know, I was showing vacant properties this week. Condominiums look pretty nice. Lady opens up the cupboard door in the kitchen and there's still crumbs and dirt on the, you know, on the, on the uh, surface of the inside of the cupboard. And she goes, oh, this house is dirty. And so... And you're thinking it's a few <laughs> crumbs. And yet it, once yeah. you've got that impression in your mind, it is what it is. Yes. And so taking the extra step, you know, using the old toothbrush, not your spouse's toothbrush, but an oh, old come toothbrush on, I'd like to on use the yours. baseboards and things like that, getting in the cracks. Well, the, that's more in the, the window cracks sills. cracks of the windows, right? get that's... that little bit of mold out of there or yeah. mold around the, you know, the tub that you've been ignoring or uh, a little bit of grout missing in the, in the tiles around the tub or the shower, that kind of stuff pays huge dividends yeah, to clean that up and fix it. And it's yeah. it's basically elbow grease. It's time and effort, yeah, right? It is. And if you've got some staining because you're in a country property and a little bit of iron in the water or something, get the right iron out stuff and clean your porcelain so it's white like it's supposed to be or beige or whatever color it's supposed to be, right? 
So that kind of thing, cleaning is huge. Right. If you're just joining us on the Inside Track on Real Estate, we have been talking about the questions that people ask it or ought to ask and often do ask a realtor before hiring them. How do you handle these things? We've chosen to go a little bit deep in the question, so you're going to have to watch show after show after show to get all the answers. And I think what we're going to have to do is one quick show at some point where we answer all of them just not as succinctly. I don't know if I can do that. I think you can because I'll teach you how. So Yetta, how did you arrive at the listing price that you say that we should put my home on the market at? That is the best question. Well, it's not maybe the best question. It's a question that is asked all the time. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, a collaborative process. So the background is all of us on the Decker team have been in the industry for at least a half a dozen years, if not significantly longer than that. And so we have a sense of the market. We're out there working with buyers and sellers every day. I hate to say 366 days this year. And it's real close to that. Collectively, way more than that. And so we have a, an internal sense of the value of a home just because we have so much exposure to the market. We've priced, we've been in, I figured out the other day, like tens of thousands of homes. You figured that out? Yeah. So you didn't like numbers and stats? I like basic numbers. <laughs> oh, okay. I like general all, oh, all okay, round okay, numbers. Okay. I love them. And in fact, I love specific numbers as well because that's actually one of the ways we help you determine the value of your home. So first there's that general sense, which is easy because it's in our blood, literally. I think there's little houses when you look on the microscope of my blood. <laughs> in the live blood cell analysis? In the analysis. live blood cell analysis. Yeah, there's little homes in your blood? Yeah, okay, I yeah. think so. It I, runs through your blood. I get it. Okay, Okay, good. you get that? Okay, perfect. And so that gives us our first blush, right? Mm -hmm. Our first sense. That's when we at least know where to start looking for the data to substantiate that. Then we're going to do individually as a realtor, and we may in fact bring the team together at some point through this process to get a second third, fourth, fifth opinion so that we can make sure we're guiding you in the right way. Mm -hmm. So it's a guided process. So are we on the right track? So are we on the right track? Are we on the inside track? <laughs> yes. On the right track around it. And so we'll start with that. And then we're going to look at the big picture, like the big, big picture, then the medium picture by specifically doing an online search. And then we're going to narrow it down to we're finding the top handful of homes that are the most relevant to the conversation to have with you around the value of your home. So we will spend some time narrowing it down. Now, some of our clients really like to be part of the whole journey with us. So we'll give you the broader search. I mean, there's nothing here to hide because what I have come to believe is that you as a homeowner, if you have the real goods, the real data, the real insight, and you can actually see how long homes were on the market, which ones were on the market that didn't sell, which ones were on the market six times before they actually sold, maybe for two years, three years, five years, nine years. And how many times did they reduce their price? Right. How many period? times did they reposition the price? How many times did they add additional features to the home to make it more desirable during that period? If you have access to all that information around, especially the relevant properties, not so much the ones that aren't relevant to you, and I'm not using the word comparable anymore, because what I've learned from you, my buyers and sellers, is that really there aren't very many homes that are truly comparable to another home. There's other home data that's relevant in the case of determining value. Mm -hmm. So we do a relevant property search to get a sense of which ones we want to put the biggest weight on. If I have a two-story home in Barhaven, as a bungalow in the same community two doors away isn't as relevant as a two-story of similar features and size three blocks away, mm -hmm. right? And one that sold, a bungalow that sold yesterday wouldn't be as relevant as a two-story that sold maybe 60 days ago because it's time that you're looking at and you still want to start with something that has more relevance to the conversation that you're having. Yeah. So, so we're not going to compare a two-story to a bungalow. No, and typically. yet there are times where you're going to want to know. So if you're in a, an eclectic community and it's a very unique community, you might want to know what the bungalows are selling for and the split levels and the two stories and the high ranches mm -hmm. because it gives you a sense of what others have sold for. Right. Especially when there's minimal data. 
So it really, the more data we have, the more specific we can get to the specific property in terms of relevancy. And the less data that's available, the broader we may have to go. Okay. So we're going to give you all that information if you're willing to take it. Some of our clients just want me to tell them or want Ken or Candace or Mark or any of the team members, Ryan, Linda, to tell them what the value is. But really, I want you to be able to somewhat see it for yourself because if we look at the same data and we don't arrive at the same answer, one of us is missing something. So what is it we're yeah. missing? And so, so it's a collaborative approach. We've done the homework. So the number you give me is that the list price, the sale price, and do I buffer in another five, ten, or twenty thousand dollars for negotiating? And that is a subjective answer. <laughs> Most of the time, what we found in this market, where it, where it's predominantly a buyer's market or a balanced market, what we're living right now. So depending on the market we're in, the answer to that question is actually different. Mm -hmm. Right. So in a market that's tight, where we have a significant amount of inventory, reasonable number of homes selling. So the number of homes as a whole has not dropped. And yet the amount of inventory has gone up dramatically. It's going to be more important to price it on the money. Price it where you believe the value is. You do not need to build a lot of negotiating room in because if you do that, you are more likely going to miss the buyer that would have loved your home mm -hmm. in okay. this market. Okay, that's great. So you've got some homes you want to tell us about. Well, at least one. Okay. I've got a beautiful I just told home. everybody we'd talk about two. I know, but today I'm going to talk about one because it's just so special. It's beautiful. It uh, really was a, a three-bedroom bungalow on the water in the Madawaska. It's a 30-minute drive from Canada. Uh, so I could live in the city yes. and work, or not live in the city, work in the city and live and, at your cottage. And live or, at my cottage, well, which is house. a lake house. It's a lake house. Lake house. It was a three-bedroom bungalow, very oversized garage uh, on a beautiful wide section of the lake right before the dam. And it's four-lane highway from Canada all the way to the exit for this house. So, wow. so and how far worry about off the two, exit is it? Oh, it's maybe five minutes. Okay. And then uh, beautiful spot. So you can't spot, hear it. You can't spot, hear the highway. You know? <clears throat> and then this person is a carpenter. A skilled carpenter and he added a, a very tall vaulted area that has the uh, beautiful uh, post and beam construction all in big pine and it's just gorgeous and same thing with the, the, the veranda wrapped around veranda very wide with the same roof over it and it's probably 50 feet to the water's edge wow. you could almost fish off the front dock I think uh, you deck. have no, off the dock you can, but <laughs> off the deck it's it's a little bit further. But it's uh, it's just gorgeous, and really for five ninety nine, people are paying that for a house in the in town, and here you've got a beautiful home, and you've got your resort living all in one. So if that sounds enticing, you want to give us a call at six one three eight six zero four six six. Three. That's 613-860-4663. And we just want to thank you. Thank you for joining us on the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team. And we'll look forward to you uh, connecting with us on the next show. Well, or call us. Yeah, you could call us. Yeah. Yeah, bye for now.